Mountains of Mecca, what can you say Of the day that Abraham passed your way And he was instructed by God to build A house of peace where people will pray And they will come on every lean Camel and that of every ravine For the purpose of praising Allah to glorify Allah. O oh, mountains of Mecca, what can you tell of the day that stones from the sky fell, destroying an army determined to break the house of Allah that Abraham built? O oh, mountains of Mecca, how was the dawn? On the day that my prophet Muhammad was born How did it feel knowing he was to be The last and most beloved of all The soul of Allah Nabi of Allah Oh mountains of Mecca you when the Prophet Muhammad climbed down in despair Engraved in his heart were the words of his Lord To all of mankind in this was his call La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah All oh, people praise only Allah Glorify Allah Mountains of Mecca, how did you mourn on the day that the beloved returned to his Lord? And up to the last breath escaped from his lips, he prayed that his Ummah would find success. Oh, mountains of Mecca, how will it feel when the earth shall quake and tremble with fear, and we shall be gathered together to stand in the court of الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن سلك طريقه إلا أنتكم الساعة All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who out of his infinite mercy has preserved our lives till this very day another lovely Juma we say to you our listeners out there السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته you are listening to Al Islam, the religion of peace, on your dazzling station, Futa Radio 93.1 FM. With you today, I am Sadiq Allah, and I'll be taking you through this episode of the program. Now, inshallah, today we shall be discussing, we shall commence a new discourse. This is something that is very pertinent at this very era of ours, this particular time. It is very, very important. I wouldn't use the word quintessential, but this is very very important for all of us out there muslims non-muslims for every one of us i will be looking at the concept of institutions for character formation the family institutions for character formation the family i have with me in the studio our guest he is one who is a regular is the imam of the federal university of technology akure my name is architect Abdelgeni Zikrula, and he's one who you know very well. You're welcome to this station today, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, uh, you're very welcome to the studio once again. Thank you. Like I was saying, uh, we'll be looking at the concept of institutions for character formation. Institutions for character formation. If you listen to the news earlier this week, we had something about the Minister of Culture and Ethics in Uganda saying something about trying to uh, reduce or to some extent this issue with regards people putting on mini skates in the public it was saying something about bringing in a law that will prohibit females from mo moving around in such manner of course there were uprisings or rather there were uproars but to think about it this is not the first time or first place such a thing will happen someone trying to 
limit or moderate whatever word you want to use how people appear in the same vein when you move around in the public today you have reasons to question the way in which people act the manner with which people act you have reasons to question their morals ethics character all of these things happen today especially in this 21st century of ours there are too many things to put in place unfortunately however we are aware that the future of tomorrow we say our kids are the future of tomorrow and so everybody attests to the fact that these things start from the home these things start from the home which makes the home the family at the crux of this issue of character formation and that is what we'll be looking at today institutions for character formation inshallah when we come back from this break i'm going to hand the mom over to you and let us learn from him please stay tuned people who all saw their lives like empty boxes they looked around the world collecting up the things they liked they filled their lives in boxes with the goodies that they gathered and they all felt in control content and they all felt all right they climbed inside their boxes they settled with their trinkets they neither looked nor learned much more and closed their lids up tight once they fastened up their boxes they smile there inside and they all thought in their darkness that the world was clear and bright but the world is not a box there's no lid no doors no cardboard flaps or locks and everything in nature from the clouds to the rocks is a piece of the puzzle of the purpose of man it's a piece of the piece of Islam along came now you're welcome back from that short break institutions for character formation that is what we are looking at today on al islam the religion of peace on futa radio 93.1 fm imam you are welcome once again thank you very much yes firstly i like to say there are quite a number of institutions for character formation the socialization process itself tells us that you have the family you have the school and then you have worship places let us take it up from there institutions for character formation أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد ابن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We thank Allah for granting us this opportunity once again to be alive. Even though most of us do not really deserve to be alive, but for this point in our life up to this time, we have no choice than to continue to thank Him immensely for this rare opportunity. We seek the choicest blessing of Allah over the Muslim Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, members of also these companions who are our model for excellence. May Allah continue to be with them and everybody that believes in Allah Amen. as His God and Creator to the Day of Judgment. Amen. Um, well, there is no denying for that man has been said to be a social animal, somebody that develops by interacting with people. And because man must continuously interact with the environment, living and non-living, there are minimum requirement of what is expected of him as a social being in terms of value, in terms of moral, in terms of um, ethics, and to ensure that man is not left on his own to do this, Allah has has internalized a number of institutions for man to learn how to live as man. I always say it, that man has learned to fly in the air better than birds. They have learned to swim in the ocean better than fishes. But what man has not been able to do is to live on earth as human being. Hmm. But if you look at our environment, generally, globally, we find you find a pitiable situation of high moral decadence, of low ethics, of most precious values. And you want come to ask the question that if it is like this, what will become the future of people to come? Mm. Somebody has observed that if we go to a society and find it in this aquatic situation, you have a number of people to blame. The family is about the first institution 
of social interaction where man is made is the production factory and of course that is also the first school everybody must attend to that extent that we said that when you have a peaceful home you have a peace society mm. the father society is not peaceful today it shows clearly that the homes are not at peace something somewhere is wrong with the home as one of the essential uh, component of this institution of course like i said there are quite a number of them but three cut across board and the first is the home the second one is the religious places the most the churches if you look at our leaders in this country they all come from one home or the other if they have been properly groomed they won't put the country into ransom like this mm. they attend one religious institution mm. where they're supposed to listen to words of god where they're supposed to, to be groomed in morals and ethics but what has become of these people they have gone to become rogues and robbers most of our chiefs are chiefs mm. most of our leaders are dealers and in fact most teachers are cheaters so if you look you go, i can go on and on and on and on so something is essentially wrong with the home something is wrong with the religious places the last hope which are a sign of learning the university a universal city itself is in crisis so the teachers were supposed to teach are shitting people are going to teach so we have this problem and i think it is not out of place for us to take a costly look at these institutions mm. and see what is expected of them at least from islamic point of view how are they and how can we move forward it is my candid belief that if every home is seen the society will be seen but the fact that society is in the state it is today shows that something fundamentally is wrong with the home front and there is need for us to take a revisit mm. thank you very much for that uh, i think what you have posited now is one that quite a number of people agree with the home or the family is at the crux of this matter there are very many adages proverbs that are coined from the home they tell you charity begins at home a lot of things have to, have to do with the home and i think at the center of this also is religion but then there is this issue of uh, trying to understand what is right and what is wrong putting issues of moral character ethics in between culture and religion in between culture and religion for sometimes a culture can probably tell you this is right in a particular context but then religiously it will be this is wrong and so you are either telling us something is right based on the religious perspective or cultural perspective i give an example let's say the yoruba parlance now you will not call someone who is old enough to be your father by name i am aware that in the house context is a different situation likewise also uh, religiously there are certain things that are expected but in certain norms and certain cultures these things are different you have cultural ethics in between religion and culture what do you have to say about that uh, well um see what is good is good what is bad is bad we all regardless of our culture regardless of our religion ask something fundamental in us okay. it's called conscience this conscience to a large extent except for people whose conscience has been deadened <laughs> because most told us that the, see the art of man is like a white cloth when he commits an evil a black dot is put there if he repents it is clean off again but if he keeps committing evil this black dot continues until the thing turns black and at that stage nothing good can come to it and nothing good can come from it there are such few people in society See, if you look at society generally, the, I always let them into three. I said there are people who are called the man angel, there are called the man devil, hmm. and there are called the man beast. See, analytically speaking, the man angel are just about five percent of society. These are people who come what they will not do evil. Let the world work on its head. They will maintain their moral standard. 
Okay. The man beast outsold there in society. Let anything happen. These people are perpetual evil doers. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is that the majority of men, about 90%, are man beast. The only wait for who will win between the man angel and the man devil, who are always perpetually conflicting. The Yoruba is a very way of saying it. The attire is a king soon. Hmm. Such that the abayeja will be abayeja, hmm. so the man angel cannot afford to go to sleep. Before he wakes up, the man devil will have turned the whole place upside down. The same way, the man devil will not also go to sleep. So there is always a continuous conflict between the man angel and the man devil. But whoever has the upper hand, most times will be followed by the man beast, and that is where majority of man falls. That is why it is important for us. But on the average, the point I'm making is that on the average. Every man has a conscience okay. to discern that ah, this thing is good. Mosalam was asked one day that tell us what is good. He said, What you would like to be done to you is what you should do to others. Mm -hmm. What you want to do, you won't like someone else to catch you doing yes. it. That thing is. Okay. He, also, he also mentioned that, that whatever you are doing that you are not comfortable with, you don't want people to meet you, you want doing to be seen it. Doing that thing. That it is that that is evil. Okay. Whatever you are doing that you are wishing that people should come and meet me. For example, if somebody should come to this office now and start sweeping and he had a step there, he will not throw away the broom. Yes. But somebody should stop there and start pooping. And he had a step, he will stand up quickly now. That is to tell us that on the good on this on the surface of it, regardless of culture, regardless of religion, every man carries that spirit of God that mm -hmm. tells him that I call it conscience, that tells that this is evil, this is good. Unless one has actually got into the extreme of the other Exactly, you know that way you <laughs> where you dropped it the issue about conscience i think that is another discourse for another day because there are people who do not believe in that instinctive thing they don't believe in conscience they don't believe in souls they are called atheists but that is a topic for another day however uh earlier on you mentioned something about minimum expectations and then requirements and then we are talking about the family at the crux of this matter it then gives one a reason to think how is it that the family which should be the factory as we put it producing the kids and invariably all of us also how is it like there's something wrong with the factory it makes me reason to think what is the constituent of a family ordinary what should be we marry yes we have kids but then what's the if we're, we're, we're marrying actually we have families but what is the requirement what are the constituents of a family ordinary well thank you very much well um since i'm a muslim i i i, I, I tend to be i'm sorry if people see me to be biased because my references will come from the ground i think and yeah, that's what makes us muslims yes, i think <laughs> you can listen along with us yes essentially in islam a family strictly speaking made of two two people the husband and the wife Two mm. people have come together for a purpose. Okay. A lot of other declared in the Quran, Surah to Rome. A lot of them mean ayat an khola khola kome na fusikun azwaja. Lita skuno ileya wajala ba inaku muwa datan wa rahma. Ina fizarika la ayati likomi yatafakaru. Each of these statements is very very instructive. A lot of them mean ayati among his signs, among his wonders, among his miracles. Is that an holla holla woman and physical as what hmm. is that has created for you from yourself, from yourself hmm. your mates? This has two implications. Okay, one that it is to reduce man below the level of animal to take apart from human being a partner. Hmm. I'm aware of what is called bestiality. Yes, who get married to animal hmm. people who impregnate animal. So Allah said, No, we have made for you from yourself a wife. From your own kind. Okay, that's an evidence against bestiality. Yes, Islamic that is one. Okay. But two is again is to say that on the personal level, I say it also is miracle that you also create from yourself a partner. So your wife is not essentially a different person; mm. it's from you. Okay. To the point that we come back to this verse is often well, a man that maltreats his wife is a stupid person. Mm. He's only maltreating his own half. They call them better half. Yes. So yes. your wife is essentially part of you that we have created from you, your partner. So your wife has essentially been created from you. Whatever, whatever mercies you find in her is only a manifestation of what is even in you. That, Allah say, we look at Allah say, that was created for you from your wife. Let us only layer. Why? Okay. 
Why, why should God create for us partners for myself? So that you can find repose, contentment in them. So if you ask me what is the essence of family, it is to find contentment. So many philosophers have spoken about this. A man will continue to be in the self rest until he meets the one half and the other. And I have said it. So that once you meet, you find repose. But the question is, how many families today are enjoying their family? Mm. What most family is doing is to endure their relationship, okay. not enjoy. So but the essence is to enjoy the relationship. But today, most families are enduring their relationship. So I just manage it to stay together. Oh. Most wife will tell you, if not for my child, I wouldn't be in this marriage. I will be here. Okay. So meaning that the man and the, the child to me, and I will tell you, is only a waste product of this relationship. Mm. So like you call it my product, but I call it a waste product. Why? I enjoy my wife, whatever it is. If God would something comes out of it, whatever I have passed away is the waste product. If God likes, let's say a man and he comes out as a child. Okay. And that's why it says in that your man is probably essentially of essentially two people. The third person is what I call the waste product. That's the okay, that's the product of the yes. And I now say when you enjoy your relationship, it does not let wajala be no more what that time we place in between you more what that time intoxicating love. Okay, not a little more what that time. Now the byproduct when there is love, the byproduct can come the shy. It's called the Rahama. I say enough is like in what we have just said, La Ayatin is enough miracle really about those who can think. For mm -hmm. God's sake, why should a Yoruba man from all the time the wife will not find a wife? We have to go to outside place we will find a wife. Okay. It is a miracle of God on its own. If we will not find a wife, we have to travel to go and get a wife. A white person for wife, for husband. So you leave your family, you leave your tribe, you leave your immediate environment. You say, this is somebody I want to live my life with. That is indeed a miracle from God. Okay. So, essentially, there are some isn't that family, the cause of families are two. One, two, essentially, three in the general basis. Two, the husband and, and the, the wife. wife. But it's all about just to give examples. It's unity of a family as a war clock. He said the family is like a wall clock. For the clock to perform effectively, mm -hmm. you only need two fingers. The one reading our okay, the, the long hand and the short hand. The okay. short hand. Ah, and the mid. Yes. So with these two, you can discern the time at any particular time. Okay. But if any of them, any of these fingers malfunction, they will trouble with the timing. Okay. Unfortunately, a wall clock that is too fast or too or slow will not be correct at any time of the day. Mm -hmm. That is when any of the partner in the family chooses to perform, that family will not rest. Okay. okay. But let me no wait. I'm listening. But I'm good with analogy. But a stop clock that is not working will be correct twice a day. Mm. So a man, a divorced family will be born once in a while, maybe reasonable. But the family that is not functioning. The man will not perform well in his office. The man will not perform well anywhere. That we want to call transfer aggression okay. because there is problem with the home front. Okay. Essentially, we have the father and then the mother, or the man and the woman, the husband and the wife. The husband and the wife. Then yeah, the okay. then the children come afterwards. And today's topic, we are trying to look at the institutions for character formation. Basically, we are talking about the byproducts yes. and. Uh, it starts from the husband and the wife. Uh, we'll be back on that. Inshallah, we'll go on a break now. We'll come back. We'll continue on the program. Please stay tuned. I'm looking back throughout the years to breathe as hard, and my eyes are choked with tears. Your face and hair are full of light. Now it will soon be time to go I feel you feeling calm now Did the angel let you know? For all the wisdom and tea you gave to me Let me offer something now so warm and comforting and sweet can you hear me whisper to you as you sleep? La ilaha illallah. 
Can't you always understand? Can you feel me take your hand? Flowers, house plants, and I, you helped us grow. Now, as I hold your cup, how were you and I to know? I've cared for you and looked for hints of paradise as I bend to wash your feet. Our minutes fade like photographs of crowds from an evening stream. For all the wisdom and see you gave to me, let me offer something now so warm and comforting and sweet. Can you hear me whisper to you as you sleep that he let a hand in long long? Did you always understand? Can you feel me take your hand? I dreamt we sat in the kitchen like we used to having tea. The apparition vanished as in life's reality. Life's reality. We will meet again, is what I'm sure I felt her say. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulil kirim. Yeah, welcome back. In case you are just joining us, you are listening to Al Islam, the religion of peace on Futa Radio 93.1 FM. And we are looking at the institutions for character formation, the family, at the crux of the matter. Just before we went on the short break, we have been listening to the imam we have tried to look at the basic institutions for character formation where we mentioned briefly about other institutions like places of worship the school and then the family and then we have posited that at the crux of the matter like we have said repeatedly is the family the imam also made us realize that the family essentially has to do with the husband and the wife and in his own words, the child is the byproduct of the family. Yes, the byproduct of the family is the issue. We're talking about character formation. We're talking about their morals. We're talking about their character. We're talking about their ethics. We're trying to divorce somewhat from what culture says. We're trying to tell you what Islam says, which is the ideal, because this is religion. This is something that was revealed. This is divine. It is the yardstick, it is not the culture, because difference in culture interprets different things also. But then, I have a reason to think. Do you blame a child who has come from a home where even the parents do not have any of these things we are talking about? What do you expect from such children? Oh, I mean, the parents themselves also <laughs> yeah, they, some family. Oh, that's true. Yes, so, they are. So, and those ones too. And the link goes on and on and on. on. First, either the egg or the egg. <laughs> the point yeah. I'm making is this. And we also tend to assume that as a stage at which somebody starts, stops to learn more or stops to develop more. It's not true. Okay. We all develop more. I believe that parents, that you can even learn from your children. So yes. I have a topic next week to discuss somewhere. It's about um, moral leadership, the role of the teachers to school so one of the points that we think that the teachers has full morals and so the children must learn from no it's not true my findings are shown that it's not true okay. but a good teacher should be able to learn more even from the children so the same thing goes for the family but the point i'm making is this what do we think of this relationship yes what is essential what do we think of it what is the creator of this institution think of the family good Allah SWT in Surah Al-Baqarah told us about the family and like he always he told us earlier in the Baqarah that it is custom to use similitude, mm-hmm. parables to talk to us and he said from this parable it will be a cathedra, he guides so many people and from it, yeah, he also, some people also miss their way but nobody will miss his way through this except mm-hmm. the evil doers. So Allah gives parables, similitudes for these institutions a lot. Each of the components, the family that a old, I said to people, what I last got to say about this evil, in Sato mm-hmm. Bakara, Allah told us that your wives are clothed for you and mm-hmm. you are also clothed for them. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Allah told us clearly the relationship these people are talking about, what they should do is to clothe one another. So we ask the question, what does a clothe do mm. to the person? 
Et sur notre Maïda, là, on fasse des questions. Okay. Tout est essentiel. Là, c'est what? The cloth covers your weaknesses. Yes, the cloth covers the faults in your body. Fault. It, it, it's something that it protects you from the inclement weather. That's true. Essentially, I have said these are the two things the clothes. So if you know, if you look at family in this form, my wife as my clothes, me as his clothes, I must do, I must fulfill these obligations for him or her. She must fulfill it for me. I must cover her. Okay. I must protect her. Mm -hmm. I must beautify her the way. She's supposed to us. But the point again is how many family comes to a relationship with this emotion. Okay. With the hope of covering the fault of the partner who I said they said whatever weakness he exposed is the innate weakness in you. So your responsibility to cover it up. Two, how many people come to this family with the hope of protecting the other partner? At least from the in laws, okay, from the inclement environment. See, I come to my from a culture from family I'm not aware of. They have expectations for me, for example, that I may not know. My wife understands, so to say, her family is I'm going to cover these weaknesses of mine from the family, from our family. But what do we do often, we expose the weakness of our partner to our family. And she becomes or he becomes object of ridicule in that family. See, this I like this similitude about the symbiotic relationship of the family, mm -hmm. of the man and the wife, that the two of us are equal in this respect. Okay. We are clothing to one another. We must protect one another, we must cover one another, we must beautify one another. But in particular, I have to spoke about the man. Mm -hmm. Now this is the man. Mm -hmm. okay. When there are two relationships, nature abhors a coup. There must be a leader. Yes. And I refer to the man as the leader of the family. But in a term that is impregnated, in Surah to Nesai, Allah says, Arijalu Kawamuna Allah Nesai. Yes, yes. Allah says, men are the pillars for women. Okay. Kawamuna Allah Nesai. They are pillars for women. Well, that's a question I forgot to say. Most men boast about this, most Muslims. Yeah, we are the man of the house, we are the pillars of the house. Mm -hmm. But you know that to ask a question, what does the pillar do? do. Oh. Okay. Yes, it, what's the essence of a pillar? Pillar in the house. Interestingly, I happens to be an architect. Okay. So I know the role of a pillar in the house. If you remove the pillar, it, will, it comes it, down. But why? Because the whole load is actually placed on the pillar. That means the man has a whole lot of responsibility. Only him for God's sake. Way, that's uh, we, vis a vis this particular topic of putting the child upright. The and man has the bulk of the load. But we have wife. a contrary opinion. Usually we have this impression about uh, the woman owns the child. So See, when the woman does something wrongly, it's like, do you know that's your that, child. Again, woman, the we say that a woman is just like an empty jar. How do you mean? A, if you put a jar here and you put white liquid, but if go and bring me that white jar, if you put a red, if you go and bring that red bottle, if you put a black, meaning that on the face of it, a woman, so I'm sorry to say, use this one, empty. So that you put inside, that will reflect. So okay. the, eventually, the owner is still on the man to put the right content in the woman. I always tell you that there are, say, women by nature are groom, but they call them bride, and they call the man the bridegroom on the day of the wedding. These are not for the fun of it. The wife is the bride. The man is the bridegroom. Somebody must groom the bride. And we know what it takes to groom somebody. Meaning that he has to be nurtured, groomed to maturity. Somebody has started the job in the name of father. Okay. He will groom the child to a point. The daughter to a point and say, oh, well, this is how far God has helped me. We hand over to the husband. You continue. So you go, ah, the bridegroom, the bridegroom. You dance around. They are telling you that, oh man, you have a responsibility to groom this woman. Mm -hmm. So the man keep grooming the wife. And the Bible told that is that women are created from the rib. Mm -hmm. And from the most crooked part of the rib, the lowest part of the rib. So if you leave them alone, they will remain crooked by nature. 
Okay. But if you force them, if you want to strengthen them by force, they will break. You break them. So, they derive enjoyment from them. They spread the crookedness. So, you wet the dry bone, try to straighten it. When you want to break, stop it. Wet it again, straighten it again. You keep doing And now you live in <laughs> harmony somewhat because when the woman is okay, yeah. you will always of, be okay too. The essence of this is that the family must be okay for that to be okay. So that's why the man owns a lot of responsibility as the kawamun hmm. in the family. He must ensure that everything runs smoothly. He is the lubricator. He must keep lubricating the family. Okay. However, it is not to say uh, the woman essentially uh, depends totally on the man to say that she does not have a role in all of these oh, issues. We come to our role. Allow, allow, allow the best of us speaker uh -huh. talk about the woman. He said that Nesahakum, your wife, ah, uh, how is uh, no, is it, is it, they are your, they, they are your farm. Mm -hmm. so, go to your farm, you may shit, and you may be like, but send good things forth. Okay. So, if that part is again, it's sort of Bakara. So, I spoke about the wife and said they are your farm. Oh, again, a mysterious man will say that, ah, that my farm, and I said we should go to our farm the way we like. So, anytime, anywhere I like, this woman lie down, let's have it. That is the meaning of a farm. Mm. But I said, no, for God's sake. It shows that women are like farm. There are different types of soils. Okay. We have the loamy soil, we have the sandy soil, we have clay yeah. soil. The same way we have women in varieties. Okay. And so it brings on man a number of responsibility again. That one, you want to take a wife? You are going into family. Marriage is essentially family. Hmm. And family, for a successful family, there are at least five essential components. Yeah. We look at this. But if we start with the type of soil I've gotten. Yes, I want to farm. I acquire a land. For me, what I got is a sandy soil. Mm -hmm. I would be stupid to plant the same thing with a man who have gotten a what? A loamy soil. Or okay. A clay soil. So in other words, comparison in marriage is one of the beginning of problem. There is no room for comparison. Don't compare your family with anybody. Okay. Everybody has gotten a peculiar land to farm. And therefore, if you must farm successfully, you must have a general knowledge of agriculture. Okay. In other words, have a general knowledge of marriage, what is expected. Two have a particular knowledge of the product you want to invest in. Okay. This are the type of life, like, like what you're going to... In other words, my family, that you must have a particular knowledge of your wife. Hmm. Everyone has come from a background, a family, a culture. So, you must have an understanding of this peculiarity of this family. Yoruba is very rich, culturally. They have what they call oriki, and this oriki has a lot of implications. Mm. There are things that the Jebus are known for, there are things that the critics are known for, there are things that the Ebas are known for, there are that the... So, if you are married from a kitty, you must know what generally are kitty people known for. Oh, very stubborn people, they don't take nonsense, things like... So if you marry away from a kitty, you think you can take her for a ride, you are joking. Mm. So you must be ready for that. You must... Within the kitty, there are peculiar, peculiar families. There are families that don't last, who don't stay with husband till the end. Oh, these are generic. <laughs> they, have been, they have that history. So you must know the history of your parent. I tell you that one of the problems we have today is that we get in class, we, we see a beautiful girl, oh, I love you, I love you. The next day we are on the altar. We got it wrong. So that's why we, when we talk about how should people come together, you know that one of the reasons we are getting it wrong today is the way we meet and we form family. Mm. But that's what we are, that's still far. But I mean, apart from that, when you know the particular, have a particular knowledge of the product, you must also know that farming is a serious business. There is okay. no pattern farming. No pattern farmer will be successful. Either has people working permanently on the farm, okay. why is yes, yes. How, or is himself, they are working permanently. That's true. So there can be a pattern marriage. Mm. A man and woman who are choosing to go to marriage must be ready for hard work. Okay. Marriage is indeed hard work. I always tell people when they get married, they say, ah, you have sent yourself to 
life imprisonment without the option of hard labor. Hard labor. Without the option of fine. <laughs> no fine. Hard no fine. See, marriage is about the only decision in life that certificates are given before learning. <laughs> and they are going to give certificate of marriage. You have not started learning at all. Then you have congratulations. <laughs> For what I have not learned. So you go into it with all this. Okay. The third thing is that, of course, it requires a lot of patience, like farming. Okay. Why? Do, there is no product I'm aware of that you plant today and you live today. So you must have patience with the woman. You must be with your husband. These are people who come from two different cultures. They are coming to meet. There will be a lot of frictions, but there are ways to lubricate these frictions. Finally, it requires a lot of prayer. Okay. As a farmer, you can plant, you can do all this. You must pray for rain, you must pray for sunlight. The same way a married man must continuously pray. Note, the family that prays together stays together. Hmm. The family that prays together, if in your family the name of God is true, that family cannot be successful. There must be one name for one God in that family. Hmm. So that family that prays together must stay together. Jazakumullah uh, khairan, Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much, yeah, Imam. Uh, basically, from those things you have put forth, uh, I'll say I understand now that the family being the crux of the matter for character formation, we there's a particular rule on the man. It's a very very heavy one, contrary to what we have as the order of the day now, expecting the woman to take care of it. Unfortunately, things have even changed now. We can all be under the same roof, but be in entirely different worlds. The man is on the TV watching the TV, CNN. The woman is in the room talking with a couple of friends on the phone discussing about next Saturday what we are going to put on and then the child is somewhere there with the blackberry you know he's tweeting everybody oh, entirely different worlds <laughs> now I'm even imagining he's not